Good morning, folks. We've got space weather, an earthquake, weather, me looking at the camera phone again, and big hits in the catastrophism category. It's disaster day in the articles as we begin at spaceweathernews.com. We find the last 24 hours on our star much quieter here in the corona, both from a solar flare and CME perspective and from the perspective of plasma filament activity. The item of note is this. Hopefully you can recognize the active region up north in ultra flex mode after hitting the gym overnight. When it crested the limb, it was just a disjointed group of tiny umbra barely deserving the name of active region or sunspot group. But now, it's gathering its forces as it nears central earth-facing longitudes today. The magnetic classification is beta, but the joy angle, which is its tilt here positive to negative, suggests it's not done growing or firing, so eyes on this one. Top quake of the last day hit 6.2 in Panamanian waters, but luckily its being offshore quells the damage capabilities of the seismicity. And so we are off to the weather, where a nor'easter is brewing off the Atlantic seaboard. It will intensify all day long, drive stronger rotation to the pressure cell, as well as a major snowstorm for the northeast. By tonight, the low cell will be very strong offshore, and so will the blizzard conditions. Speaking of such things, maybe not quite a blizzard, but you don't need one to damage orange crops. Not an every year occurrence there. So folks, this is funny. I did a deeper look yesterday on predicting the late year solar uptick and shared a bunch of papers on short range solar cycles while staring at the camera. And here's another one on those short range solar cycles. The 5.9 or approximately six month solar cycle confirmed once again here and confirming the concepts in yesterday's deeper look episode at suspiciousobservers.org. Up next, it's another one of those papers that you read and say, well, on one hand, this is tremendously good science, and on the other hand, with Earth's field shifting now, this is more bad news for the biosphere since nothing is going to know where it's going. They sneak in wording about the ongoing disaster as well. In a simulation of exactly that scenario, we find major energy conversion changes between the solar wind and magnetic field. These are the causes of the amplified correlations we speak of so regularly, the greater coupling and greater energy conversion. Up next, it's a similar study of the Le Champ excursion, and it found that not only is the planet subject to higher flux of solar energetic particles and cosmic rays, but they are latitude independent. It's a nice little nod to the latitude changes ongoing at that time. Wink to the veteran observers who know what that means. And lastly, folks, we're going to have to do a deeper look or special video on this one because its implications are vastly reaching. For so long, we said the sun, volcanoes, and climate shift together, and after last year's bombshell on the solar forcing of DOs and Heinrich events, here come confirmation of the volcanoes. This scientific field is on fire right now. Just wish they weren't getting so good at confirming the end of this age approaching and the coming new one. We greatly appreciate your support. Those deeper look episodes I mentioned are for website members at suspiciousobservers.org. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.